Hey guys, we're back in Santa Cruz. This is North America headquarters for Gazelle and we're looking at the ultimate C380 plus HMB hybrid mid-drive Bosch. That's what that's talking about. And the C380, C is what they say for any of their internally geared or in this case, uh, continuously variable transmission hubs. So this is an NVO low, 380 degrees of gear ratio. So something like 11 to 42. It does weigh a little bit more than a traditional cassette and derailleur, but you can shift it standstill and it's ramped. So it's continuously variable. There aren't steps. Um, I like this in the sense that it's quiet. It's not as external as a derailleur that would be hanging down that could get bumped. And of course we have the Gates carbon belt drive. Very nice. 22 teeth back here, 55 teeth up here carbon it's lightweight it's durable more durable than a chain it's not going to bounce down and kind of you know clink against the frame of which there are three sizes and two styles by the way so this is the mid step a little bit more approachable than a high step and you don't you don't sacrifice too much frame strength or rigidity uh, i love that they've got bottle cages right here if you went with the high step in addition to the primary battery, you could mount a secondary battery right here, a Bosch Power Pack 500. Now this is the Bosch Power Tube 500. We'll get into those stats a little bit later. The bike, as you see here with these 65 millimeter wide aluminum alloy fenders and this awesome integrated rack with the lights, everything you see, adjustable stem, it weighs about 62.6 pounds. So it is a little bit heavier. And I, I do chalk that up to sort of the internal battery and the extra strength that they've built into this down tube or this main tube. And I'll show you that when we take the battery off. And of course, the uh, new, new Vinci back here, the NVO low hub. There is this traction fluid inside that adds some weight. And there's these orbs that sort of, there's like a teeter totter that helps you get that variable ramping. It's a really neat system, but it does add a tiny bit of friction. It adds that weight we talk about, and it adds some price. So $47.49, it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but in the scheme of things, even though it's one of the higher priced Gazelle models, I feel like you're getting a lot of really good technology here, including the Bosch motor. So this is their speed motor. And when I mentioned before, C380 plus, the plus is what denotes the higher speed bikes from Gazelle. So up to 85 Newton meters of torque on this thing, excellent weight distribution. It's actually more compact and lighter than the older performance line speed motors from a couple of years ago, weighs about 7.1 pounds. The battery pack with the shield weighs about seven pounds. So kind of 14 pounds of additional weight right there. And then the rest of it's all spread out across the frame. Since we're up here, quick release on the front wheel, which is kind of nice if you need to move this or you're doing some, some wheel or tire maintenance. I love that they're using these Schwabi 50 kilometer per hour rated Energizer Plus tires. So these are like e-bike rated for higher speed. They've got this Addix E rubber compound and G Guard 5. So it's puncture resistant and it has reflective sidewalls for safety. I mentioned the lights before, but you know, safety is, a, is really important for me, especially if you're riding a bit faster, maybe you're in the city and you're in a bike lane next to the road. It only comes in this one frame color, kind of a platinum, a metallic, really beautiful integrated cabling that they've done here. I always love to see that. And then at higher speed, comfort is a, an important factor for me at least. So these Ergon GP1 locking grips, and they do have the half grip here, so it just flows perfectly into that shifting mechanism. And then the suspension fork, this is the SR Suntour Mo Mobi 45. And on the website, it says air spring, but I think this is just like a standard spring coil. I bet it is lighter weight because they're using aluminum alloy stanchions, 34 millimeters, so wider, anodized black, 80 millimeters of travel right there. We do have compression lockout with a bunch of little increments along the way. Preload, so you can preload that spring for your body weight or maybe your cargo load back there. And we even have rebound adjust. So this won't be quite as bouncy as some uh, comparable spring suspension that, that don't have rebound. I'm, I'm used to seeing these multiple adjusters, especially rebound, only on air forks. So to me, that was really neat to see. 15 millimeter through axle right here. So extra sturdy and standard 100 millimeter hub spacing. If we look at the rims here, that's another area that's kind of unique. They're, they're like kind of mid-dish. So they're a little bit taller and they're sort of, 
almost like aerodynamic, right? They're not just this round flat thing. They're a little bit like taller and sharper. 14 gauge spokes up here, lighter weight, a little bit thinner. 13 back there for added strength and everything. The tire size is 28, so it is a taller wheel. It's got that lower attack angle, a little bit smoother. It does elevate the bike slightly, which again, it's nice that we've got that mid-step frame. They're 28 by 1.75 width, so they're not the widest tires, and there is this trend for e-bikes tending to get wider and wider tires. It just adds air volume and a little bit of stability when you're riding, but there's additional friction as well in those cases. And this is 45 to 70 PSI, so it is potentially a higher tire pressure rating, which again, you're taking out some of that spongy comfort, but you're adding efficiency. So if you really wanna be efficient and you're in a really smooth paved area, you can lock that suspension fork out, take the tire pressure up, and it's, it's gonna perform like a, just a really efficient, fast road bike almost. The body position, however, is, is definitely more comfort oriented. And before we get to the stem, this is a tapered steer tube as well. So inch and an eighth to inch and a half. We've got, I think it's 60 or 70 millimeters height there and then adjustable angle, negative 10 to 60. So you can take this almost like down or pretty straight and then um, all the way up and get that kind of Dutch upright riding position. The handlebar is fairly narrow. I definitely noticed that when I got on because I've been reviewing a lot of cruiser bikes, relaxed, you know, kind of the gull wing. This is just, it's just like curved almost and it's narrow, which could help if you're going into you know, a house or a garage, you're not gonna hit the door quite as easily, or maybe you're actually passing between cars in traffic and you wanna keep those in so you don't hit people's mirrors when you're going by. I think it's a pretty good setup. Over here we have actually a seat post shim, 29.8 millimeter shim that goes down to 27.2. Very standard size right there. Easy to find a suspension post if you want one. I did speak with the folks at Gazelle because there's another uh, C380, like non-speed version we've reviewed and it did have a suspension post. And I was like, huh, wouldn't you want that? You know, you're going at higher speed. And so, you know, you can really start to feel the little bumps and stuff more. And, but I guess they were saying, well, then it can kind of get bouncy if you're going faster. So I guess it's up to you. This saddle is very nice. It's a little bit wider and fairly comfortable, sort of spongy Sully Royale. It does have a little plug in the back for maybe adding a light or other special accessory that they sell. A couple more features as we move towards the back of the bike. I love that we've got this aluminum alloy chain cover. If you're like me, you're riding around with pants or maybe you've got a dress or something, it's just gonna keep your pants from touching that belt. Although again, it does tend to be cleaner, just quieter. Standard 170 millimeter crank arms and then these nylon sort of plastic with rubber grip, they, they seem to work okay the pedals sometimes i upgrade and get metal and you know the, the fixed pins just so i'm not slipping off i feel like this would be a great bike for just all around it's feature complete you know you got the lights you got the rack the fenders and sometimes when you get wet shoes having that extra traction can be nice check this out we've got an axa defender this is a frame lock so it puts a, a metal tube right through the rear wheel, kind of in between the spokes, so people can't move the bike. I'm gonna to try to do it here. There we go, so I've got that, that metal bar, and now I can pull the key out. One of my complaints is that until you lock that cafe lock, the key won't come out. It's like in there. So you almost have to like either have your keychain dangling on this thing the whole time, or have a loose key like this, just a single loose key. Maybe you got a carabiner or something to clip it, but I feel like that could get lost more easily. One one thing that's great about the key, however, is that it's key to like to match the battery locking cylinder. So I'm going to insert this. I think actually it's only one direction like that. And then I can unlock the battery and uh, it's the Bash power, power Tube. They sort of have the top mount design that we see here as well as a bottom design. This feels a little bit more secure to me because gravity's pushing it back into the frame versus trying to take it out the bottom and maybe you know hit the fender on the way. There's a little release button here that you have to press. So it's two, two steps. You insert the key and twist and then you press this button and then the battery comes out. Again, seven pounds on this thing. 36 volt, 13.4 amp hour. So, you know, pretty nice. It's got this black plastic shield that's fairly, it feels like it's, it's gonna be easier to replace than a color match shield or something. And so that's, that's nice. It doesn't add that much weight. Again, about seven pounds on this. And now you can see 
inside the frame, there's this extra, it's almost like an inner mount tube. In addition to this outer tube, there's a lot of metal going on here. It just feels really solid, really strong, almost like they didn't need this, this top tube. But of course that is gonna add frame strength for higher performance, which is great for these higher speeds. I love that you can charge the battery on or off the bike and that Gazelle has put the locking mechanism as well as the charging port on the drivetrain side of the bike. So you don't have to go to this other side, you know, the bike's kind of leaning over, it's easy to hit your head on that handlebar and stuff. I love that they put it all right here. That's exactly what I'd like. I think if this key uh, locking cylinder could have been up here too, then it wouldn't have had to bend down so low. You can see how it's pretty close to the crank arm, but not quite there. Again, if this was connected to a keychain, it starts to get a little busy but I don't wanna to complain too much. I mean, they're still doing better than a lot of other companies I've seen using Bosch. And here is the standard charger it comes with. Great, great option. This is 1.6 pounds, four amp output. So it charges very quickly. It's like four and a half hours to charge that thing from empty. It's lightweight, easy to take along. And I think if you get the second battery, it can charge both batteries simultaneously. Again, that's only for the high step uh, is that option available. And I, I think it's like 900 bucks or something. You end up spending more money, but this is one of the more advanced battery setups from really any e-bike company out there. And Bosch supports their stuff for a long time. They support the two-year comprehensive warranty uh, that Gazelle offers, so you're getting a really good warranty. They tend to sell these through shops, so you've got some cu good customer support and maybe fitting opportunities since they do have several frame sizes. And then, you know, here I'm trying to put this back in. If you line it up and then it, it goes in pretty well, but it does take a second, you know, it just feels like there's a little bit more doing to get that thing really seated perfectly. There we go, it feels like it's in. And then my other complaint is that when it's time to put the battery in, so the charging plug, it's sort of replicated up there, it goes up and then the locking mechanism down here, you actually can't get the battery in without turning this. And and that's that just adds an extra step. It's, it's challenging to do. You kinda gotta line it up and use two hands. I'm thankful I got it with just one hand on camera here, but there's just more screwing around. It, you know, I feel you need the key to do the lock and you need this and you gotta unlock it and put it back in, open it again just to put the battery back. I'd prefer if you could just click it in, but um, that's not how it's set up. So let's take the key, reinsert it over here in the cafe lock. There we go, kind of slides back. And then I think this other hole here can be used for a, a chain accessory from AXA. So you could lock the rear wheel and you could loop a chain around a light pole or something like that, pretty cool. And then at the back of the bike, I think this is 135 millimeter hub spacing. We do have nuts here, it's not quick release. And then we have this horizontal sliding dropout and that's so you can get the correct tension in the belt. And the belt does have this CDX center track design so it's not gonna float off. Gates does a really good job. I mean, it's almost like a timing belt in your car or something. Just really, really nice to see that. And you can see the shifting mechanism right here. So if I were to twist the gear shifter, you can actually see it moving, it's mechanical. So it requires a little bit of, a little bit of extra hand strength up here, but it's not too bad. And we've got that infographic that shows like, okay, flat, that means faster, it's like a higher gear. And if we twist forward, we see them climbing, and that means like lower gear, easier, um, you know, faster spinning, but easier for climbing. That's kind of how that's set up. There's the rear rack. This thing is pretty cool. It's rated up to 27 kilograms. That's like 59.5 pounds. It's like almost 60 pounds. That's great. That's definitely higher than average. Most racks I see are only rated to 50 or maybe 55. It's got a little bungee thing on there and sort of these, I'd say they're fairly close to standard gauge tubing. So they'll work with a lot of panniers that can clip onto the side. We've got a good blocking support structure here so it won't touch the wheels as you're riding. And then a bungee loop at the bottom. So you could take another bungee and go over uh, and maybe secure like a milk crate or something like that. It's a pretty good setup. You can see right here, that's the magnet for the rear wheel speed sensor. The Bosch drive system is, is excellent. They make some of the best sensors in the industry and it's really measuring three things. Your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque. And all of those are combined like over a thousand times per second. 
to give you a responsive dynamic feel when you're riding. And because it's so responsive, they don't need motor inhibitors or anything else. It's, it's all right there in the brain, uh, the controller for the motor. In addition to being really responsive, you know, it, it offers from 40 to 85 newton meters of torque. And I'm really glad to see that they went with the NVLO Trekking Edition because that's also rated to 85 newton meters of torque. So you're not putting too much strain on that, that rear hub, which I think maybe that was a problem in the early days as the mid drives became more and more powerful. So this thing is set up right. It's part of what you're paying for here is, is premium components. The Bosch motor, it, it also has a standard size chain ring now, it used to have like a con reduction gearing kind of system. So this is much more clean, it's quieter, and it has shift detection, which it maybe isn't relevant when you have a continuously variable transmission like this. But I just wanna point it out, you know, they do a good job. You've got this little plastic cover and then kind of almost like a heat sink design down here. A little bit of plastic at the bottom too to protect it. It's, it's fairly naked though. They kept it just compact, fairly visible on the bike. 20 millimeter bolt spacing for this adjustable length Ursus kickstand here in the rear. It's been working pretty well out on my ride. And then of course, the very last thing are the brakes. So we've got three finger levers with adjustable reach. If you're a smaller person with petite hands, you can bring those in a little bit, kind of fit just right. You don't have to reach as far. And then 180 millimeter rotor up front, extra large, which is great because it's going to help to dissipate heat when you're going faster and braking for a prolonged period. And it gives you a mechanical advantage over these taller, like wider tires and wheels. So that's great. Quad piston caliper. So you've got additional surface, which is going to cool faster and just give you more grab when you're braking. It's a pretty nice setup. I, I was surprised to see quad piston uh, up there actually. And then in the back, quad piston as well. So one, two, three, four. But this is a smaller rotor, 160 millimeters back here. Kind of makes sense. As you stop, your weight tends to shift forward on the bike, kind of the momentum. And uh, makes sense to have the bigger rotor up front. So I should turn this thing on and do a light demo press the power button on top of the display. If that doesn't work for some reason, there is another power button right here you might have to press to prime the battery. After a while, these batteries sort of go to sleep to protect the cells inside. But uh, you'll also notice that the light icon, it's, it's on by default. So a lot of speed pedal X, especially in Europe, they like force you to have the lights on all the time. Thankfully, Gazelle has left, left this open. So if you wanna turn that off, you can hold the plus button for a couple seconds and it disappears and now the lights are off. But I want to show you guys so here we'll hold it again the rear light is pretty great it's got four leds and you can see them pretty well from the side they've left the window open got a reflector down low but it, it's nice that this is almost at the very end of the rack and then it's got this metal protective part on top um, you don't want this to get cracked so the protection is nice but you do want it like far back and high up and i feel like that's right where they've put it it's not going to get blocked if you have a trunk bag and i think a lot of pannier bags are going to kind of stop and interface with this rear support arm and they're not going to slide too far back and block that light hopefully and then up front, we've got this Blue Line 50E. This is a great light, and I love how it's positioned. So in addition to being very bright and kind of aimable, it's got side windows, which is wonderful. So you get that side visibility again, with like the reflective tires and the rear light. And I, yeah, I just, I again, safety is a big deal for me. So I'm wearing a black helmet, but it's actually got a light built into the back. So I'm, I'm always like trying to figure out where's the best place to have the light. It does add a little bit of clutter to the handlebars, but with this smaller Purion display panel, you know, there's there's space for this. So we're inside now, you can see the, the backlighting on that display and then the headlight just over there. It's, it's pretty bright. Now it's very effective. And then the four LEDs in the back, definitely gonna keep you visible for those nighttime commutes. Some of the other Bosch displays, you can actually replace this and go with like a Kiox or maybe uh, an Intuvia or the new Nyon, like big color display. But those are all, they tend to be mounted right in the center. So this, this works pretty well. It does, it's missing some of the menus and some of the advanced features like uh, wireless Bluetooth to interface with the Bosch smartphone app where you can do some motor tuning and stuff. And it doesn't have Amp Plus for like a heart rate monitor but it's just, it's compact. It fits 
it fits up here pretty nicely. So kind of is what it is. We've got speed right now in miles per hour, but if we wanted to, we could hold minus and tap power and we get kilometers per hour. So that's, that's how you switch those. We're in off, but if we press plus, we can go to eco, tour, sport, and turbo. Those are four different levels of assist from 60% support all the way up to 340% support at turbo with that 85 Newton meters. It's a really broad range on this bike. Down here we have battery charge level. So there's five ticks. And for me, this is a little bit underwhelming. It'd be nice if there were 10 because you'd have 10% increments instead of 20%. It'd be nice if there was like just a straight up battery percentage readout, but we don't have that. Instead, we have a range estimation. So to show that menu, we're gonna hold the minus key for a second. And it's gonna say, okay, here's our trip distance. Here's our total distance, like odometer. And here is range. So it's saying, well, in the highest level of assist, based on the last mile of riding and the battery charge level, we think you can go about 13 more miles. And the the website, the official website for Gazelle says you can go like 25 to 55 miles on this bike. So we've, we've already used up a whole bar on the battery, 20% at least. So let's take it down to Eco and see what it says. 39 miles. So yeah, this is kind of in line with with what the, the website says. And at the bottom, as long as you aren't in off, if you're in one of the assist levels, if you press walk mode and then hold the plus button for a second, the bike will push itself forward, which is nice. Again, this could be a 62 and a half pound bike. Maybe you've got some cargo on this rack, almost 60 pounds worth of cargo. It's nice that the bike can sort of push itself, especially if you get a flat tire or you're just going across something that's not comfortable to ride on. It's too technical. So I, yeah, I mean, you know, it's got a lot of good features here. It rides pretty well. I think my my biggest considerations with the, the bike are sort of like, well, the pedals, you know, you, you are paying more for this. The battery interface is a little bit wonky. It takes some extra doing. Um, and then the shifter mechanism, I, you know, I, I actually prefer a derailleur and cassette because for me, it's I'm riding and I can tink, 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 and I can go right through the gears. It's not going to be maybe as durable and clean and quiet as this, but it will weigh less. And I've actually found that when I'm pedaling under heavy load, like maybe like the motors in a higher level of assist, like sport or turbo, I can't really shift this. I, I, maybe I could force it, but I don't want to. Like it, it sort of stays in the gear that it's in. And it's, I almost feel like I have to ease back manually before I can shift gears. I definitely have to to alter how I'm pedaling a little bit more to shift than I, I would if this was a traditional cassette with the shift detection and everything. So it's um, it's a trade-off. And I think for, for some people, like this is gonna be really clean, really durable. Maybe you're parking at a bike rack or in a crowded garage. Like this is just out of the way. And it's just, it's it feels more like bulletproof in some ways. But if you're like a really speedy technical rider and you wanna like be engaged with the drivetrain, like a manual transmission car, that's, that's not gonna be, um, it's gonna take a little bit more to get that feeling. Okay, so we've gone through all the details on this bike. Maybe it's time to just hop on and go for a ride. By the way, I like that this has this nice clicky sound when you pedal backwards and that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't spin freely. Like there are some mid drives where you just, you do this and the, the pedals just spin and spin and it feels a little dangerous. Like if you slip off, it's gonna spin around and hit your shin. Um, however, it does not cycle the drivetrain. You'll notice that the belt is not moving. So I don't know, just something to mention in terms of drivetrain maintenance. You might have to use a stand to get the bike's uh, wheels off the ground. And the highest level of assist, let's do it. I love the suspension. I mean, this is a really nice suspension fork that they're using here. I, I haven't uh, I haven't seen too many spring forks that are this nice. One of the other things that the Performance Line Motors from Bosch offer is a really high pedal RPM support. So I can pedal like above 120 RPM rotations per minute and the motor will still support me. And that's relevant if you're coming up to a hill and you decide to downshift. So you, you kind of like ease off on your knees a little bit and just prepare to climb. If you do that and the motor can't support the higher RPM, well then you're, you end up slowing down. You have to shift down again. It's sort of this positive feedback loop. So I like that Bosch 
does keep up and that their motor is so fast. I'm gonna try to outpace it here for you. There we go. Yeah, so I kind of got there, but it's, it's really fast. It was really feeling good. And the bike tracks so nicely. It's a really stable feeling bike. Very upright, very comfortable. Probably not as aerodynamic when you're in that upright position like this, but it's still, it's still fast. I mean, that motor offers a lot of power. So you can see this is the size medium frame. I'm about 5'9", and I weigh 135 pounds for reference. The bike's very approachable for me, and it feels very, very sporty and satisfying. It's like a whole new story. Yeah, that's a size medium. You got the mid-step, so fairly approachable. I got the seat pretty high. You feeling okay? Okay. Cool. Looks like a good fit. And that's the speed pedal act. You want to blast off real quick? <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> nice. That was perfect. All right, we're gonna take a little right turn and go through the experience uh, center, future location. Sounds good. So I'm in the Gazelle offices here in Santa Cruz. This company has been around for like 130 years and they produce something like 250,000 bikes per year. So they're part of this like Royal Dutch program where the Dutch government like recognizes historically significant and environmentally friendly brands and stuff. So I just, I kind of thought that was cool. Here's like an old black and white photo. I think the plant is in uh, Deeren, Netherlands and there's a color sort of a newer one they do a whole bunch of testing as well so all the frames and stuff they'll uh, subject them to like extra uv radiation and they'll test that everything is like water resistant and sort of corrosion resistant coming back to the bike having fenders having lights and just being a little bit more durable that's what you know i've learned as i did a little bit of research about the company and so i just wanted to share that with you guys too So yeah, I have to kind of ease off in order to shift the gears, which is a little bit annoying if you're trying to accelerate. There we go, just about 28, there it is. And then the motor, motor kind of eases out, feeling very comfortable. It's a nice suspension fork. Maybe a little bit less efficiency with the NVLO and the belt drive. Guys, I think that is about it. I've had a really good time riding around Santa Cruz. I've measured everything on this bike. All the standover height, minimum saddle height, maximum saddle height, the seat post diameter, everything to try to get you just set up on this bike. And back at electricbikereview.com, I've got a comparison tool. So you could look at the non-speed version versus this and kind of tease out any little differences like that. I also have some forums so you can talk to people who actually own gazelles. They're not just looking at it for, you know, a day or so doing a review. I love you. I hope this helps you. And I hope you have fun riding out there. I'll see you on the next one.